Does money make you happy? How much space is too much space? And can 100,000 square feet of prime LA real estate fill up the void in a broken man's heart? Today, we're gonna be answering those questions thanks to a new site of YouTube I recently discovered, which I like to call ultra rich flex YouTube. And they're gonna be blessing us poor people today. I mean, I know, I know I got the Lambo in the back. For these people, a Lamborghini is like a cardboard box, okay? It's nothing to them. These people are ridiculous. And today, well, they're gonna be blessing us. Look, with a feature length documentary called The Biggest and Most Expensive House in the World, which they are humbly calling The One. Now, if you're interested in this, I encourage you to go watch the full thing because I'm just gonna be cherry picking the best little bits uh, because normally I'm not interested in this kind of stuff. I mean, if, it's fine if you're into it, but for me, luxury for the sake of luxury isn't my style. But the reason this video interests me and the reason I'm bringing it before you today is number one, listen, we've been talking about too many dark things, bump and dumps, scams, whatever. It's nice to take a little bit of a pause. But secondly, this video is so much more than it appears under the surface. It is like the, the iceberg of videos. It appears to be a luxury video about a luxury house. But in fact, under the surface, it's like a mini documentary on the hollowness of wealth, the insanity of obsession, a, a testament to just how out of touch you can get with regular human beings. It's incredible, okay? It's, it's a journey. That's all I can say. And before we embark on it, let me just introduce you real quick to the main characters of our saga. The first is this designer, Niall Niami. He's the developer of The One. He's a complete psychopath. <laughs> the second one though is our host, producer Michael, who's one of the biggest ultra rich content creators. Now, I'm not, I don't wanna bias you anymore, so without further ado, put these on real quick. Droning over Miami, let's go. It is the most epic of epic videos. We are at the largest house in the urban world. When I say the largest, it is 105,000 square feet. It is called The One. And what gets better than that, we are with the one and only Niall, who is the visionary behind this. He built this and he is just a, an incredible guy. And he's gonna show you, us around you. this house that no cameras have seen this house before in its entirety, ever, 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 is that correct? That's right. So it starts out, the tour starts off fine, but pretty quickly, it's clear that things start to go off the rails. The type of person to build this house is not gonna be stable. This office is the only room in the house. The house is surrounded by water, so we have little moats, and we have a total of seven water features and swimming pools combined, but this office, you'll see, every single wall in this office touches water, so it's like it's floating. This is just incredible. Look at the height of this. I, I'm six foot two. One small question, why? I feel like you could fit a small crane in there and I'm not talking about the bird. These are supposed to be drawers. How do you get there? With the cherry picker? It's, it's impossible to put anything in those shelves. I think this is the best moment where you realize these people are on one. Talk to you guys about that because it's something close to me. They're uh, taking us to a glass statue and then offhand he says this. Um, this is a moat and the reason that we did a moat here. Is Let me stop you right there. It, there is no reason to do a moat. It, first of all, I love how he's like, hey, we're going to go see this. Oh, by the way, there's the moat. <laughs> And then he, he tries to justify it like there's any good reason forever for a moat but besides to defend, you know, some castle structure from invading troops. So below, we have probably the world's most expensive running track because you can't run in Bel Air because there's no sidewalks. So now you can run from here all the way to where the front door is. Does anybody ever stop in these projects and go, but why? The property is like 100,000 square feet. I feel like running from one bedroom to another is enough of a workout. Are you joking me? This is going this. to be a first. I never walk on grass. <laughs> like, usually you watch videos because it's, like, relatable. I have to imagine nobody's watching this and thinking, yeah, that's me. This is real grass, and I'm going to walk on it. What? Congratulations, Michael. Welcome to the team, I guess. This artist was nice enough to make this for us, and because they wanted to be involved in the one, but it's turned into something so much more because my ex-wife, I'm just getting divorced, unfortunately. Ooh, okay. It's very sorry to hear that. It was a whirlwind relationship. I met her during COVID and it, it didn't work out. Met her, married her and divorced her during COVID, okay. Weird thing to bring up when you're bragging about the one. Okay, bad joke, but is that why she didn't go with you? Cause she never felt like she was the one. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll, I'll see myself out for that one. <laughs> 
kidding, guys. I would never leave you in the middle of our show. Excuse me. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you there, bud. Oh, but this is a charity that we have called Wings of Angels, and this is going to help children in third world countries. It's not. Through the arts. Because What? What, are you going to send him a picture of this? You send him a little postcard. Hey, look how sick my house is. This artist was nice enough to make this for us. She, she came from a very tough life in Cordoba, and she wants to be part of the solution of changing the world. And one of the ways we're gonna do this here is through this charity. I, I guess she's talking about like a real charity, but you keep touching the sculpture and it makes me think that you think that the sculpture is gonna like save kids with the arts. And by the way, I don't think their problem is not enough arts. I think their problem is food. I'm not trying to hate on this guy's charity thing. I just think it's funny that he thinks this sculpture is gonna change the world. This is a elevator, I'm assuming. Elevators, I think there's six elevators. He's like, that's like the lamest one. Actually, keep it moving. It's, we've got six of them. Dime a dozen here in the one here. Six and, elevators. You know, I'm, I'm a big developer. I, I have built a lot of houses, no houses like this, but I've learned over time that we really need to start sustaining and trying to do things where we don't just waste. <laughs> Dude, this man has built one of the most opulent, wasteful properties in the entire world. And then he unironically, because you can feel it, can't you? That he believes this. He unironically, like, is trying to say to this guy he's delivering the property to, like, hey, man, really learned how to not be wasteful. The irony hurts. So this is one thing that, that we found. All of my flowers are artificial, but you can never tell. Right. I hate this man. I really do. This is where it turns for me from, like, hey, this guy's, like, it's funny how out of touch to, like, oh, I, I hate you, though. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're saving the world through artificial flowers in the most wasteful property of all time. It could be an Apple headquarters, the size of this building, and it's for one person. There couldn't be a more wasteful thing on earth. And this guy's trying to tell you, learned a lot about, you know, uh, the, the green world. It's like when, you know, somebody's flying a private jet and he's, they're lecturing you about recycling. They're like, Hey, you got to recycle those aluminum cans. It's like, you jackass, okay? We see what you're doing. Coffee, tea, anything you want. But the cool thing about it is, this is the setup here. So it holds the milk and keeps it cold. So you don't have to fill the milk up like in the Miele's. And then it grinds it fresh. So this does everything. You don't have to descale. You don't have to do anything. You just- This is the first part of the house where I'm kind of like, eh, I kind of want that. Can we start a GoFundMe for me, guys? <laughs> Touch on your phone, cappuccino. And other than having a cup come up, it does it all. Guess where we saw one of these, Michael? Where? In your other house. <laughs> oh, yeah. In your... Oh, yeah. This... Oh, I forgot about this part. A tiny little 18,000 foot house that was 65 million bucks. Which one was that? Which did you go to? <laughs> Which 18 million dollar house are you talking about? Referring to with that super specific cappuccino machine. I've got 12 of them. And just wait, because it gets so much worse. How much of the house would you say this is, Niall, percentage wise, that we're looking at? 15, 10? <laughs> so look, at, look at come, folks. Look at the running track. Oh, you weren't kidding. No. That's a real running track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can watch the moment he realizes this. Oh wait, rich people don't run. Why would you want to run on a track where you can look down and see your kind of hideous, disgusting, poor neighbors. You don't want to see that, right? So they take us to the nightclub. I would say that probably the part that the most people have been talking about about this house tour though, is this weird moment. I know, and unfortunately in LA, I know a lot of the dudes are scumbags here and I'm going to change that. I'm going to turn all the dudes into good people. How so are you going to do that? One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to set them on their feet. So check out what I did here. Plates right here, that's for a monitor, right? And then if you come into the, his side. So he puts a monitor in the girl's it. side. <laughs> Can you believe these this? Are no. the, these are the urinals and I'm going to have cameras here looking at the guys. You're going to have cameras? Cam Me too. Me too. Hey, me too, this man, right now. <laughs> I'm just not sure the logic tracks here. This guy says, hey, I'm going to save the dudes in LA from being total dirtbag scumbags. I'm tired of it. How are you going to do that? I'm going to spy on people's uh, genitals without their consent. That's, hey. <laughs> oh, man. Are you guys not entertained? This is, this is not your average luxury tour, guys. We are witnessing a special breed of human 
who has transcended social cues, who has transcended self-awareness and become something entirely, the type of man who knows how to set men right by peeking on their private parts, I guess. Little dick camera is what it is. Camera's looking at the guys putting the image in the girls' bathroom. Out of the box thinking. <laughs> That's a normal- I have to say, the approach of let's stop guys by being creepy, by being even creepier, it is out of the box. I'm just not sure how that's gonna work for you, Chief. Now with all these beautiful moments of these people being out of touch, whatever, I think it's finally time to end the tour prematurely. You can go watch the full thing on their YouTube channel and talk about the true insanity. Because if you thought they're just walking you through the house was crazy, there's an even better video called The One Its Vision and Future Explained, which is a video about the house and like what it's built for. And this is what really blew my mind about realizing, oh, these people need professional help. Like it is beyond a YouTube video to help these people. Yeah, they're asking like, what's your favorite part of this house? And the designer is gonna answer, answer now, Miami, Miami. And you said something like, what we can do with the house. Mm -hmm. What did you mean? Tell everybody. Well, I think that I have something very, very exciting. And I believe that I don't have this by chance. The house is called The One Bel Air and my show is called The One. And between those two, I think that we have the ability to really change the world in a very positive way. When you say change the world in a positive way, how does this house change the world? This is the first great question by producer Michael. Uh, so far, it's just been like clapping this guy in the back for building this completely ridiculous house. Nobody needs this. And actually, I heard that this guy is having a hard time selling it because of basically precisely that problem. So then this guy goes, oh, it's gonna change the world. So how? I, 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 I need I, you to explain I, that. I will explain. So because of COVID, all of the venues around the world have been either shut down or dramatically altered. There is nowhere in the world really where you can go for a venue like you used to have, like a big boxing match or the Academy Awards. If you're asking yourself, is he going where I think he's going with this? Because if he is, he's the worst human on the planet. The answer is yes to, <laughs> to all of those the things. the Grammys or anything else that required a large crowd to gather at Staples Center or MGM or Caesars Palace or any of these other places. But we have it now because this house has the ability to hold 900 people in a safe COVID environment. Let's give it up, guys. We The, the world was suffering because nobody could meet together and this guy Spent like a hundred million dollars, five hundred million dollars building something that could seat nine hundred people. This guy's like, hey, the world has a problem. No one can, can meet because of COVID. So I spent ten years building this thing that can make nine hundred rich people's life slightly better. <laughs> Cause by you're not inviting poor people, right? Like I love how this guy's like, hey, well, I'm doing charities for like like poor people, and then you find out that actually the house is of course just for rich people to go from their mansion to the giga mansion. And what is being created for this house is a show that is a show that everyone will want to watch and identify with because it stars me. Nobody identifies with this or you. And I live in the house with people that I love. We do crazy things and have crazy parties, but we also help the world in so many different ways. This is this is great. I, I'm sure this is how the Kardashians feel too. They're like, we're doing the world a service. We're changing the world. How? Will people get to watch us live a great life? It's like, <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't change my life. But what would change like, you know, third world country people's life is not you building a, a mansion in the most wealthy part of the world. It's you may be helping with that money. And I'm not saying this to like, you know, shame this guy for spending the money, his money, the way he wants to spend it, but you can't pretend you're helping the world while not helping the world. That's all I'm saying. Don't say you're doing this for charity or the world when you're just building yourself a 100,000 square foot mega giga mansion. We are creating gigantic boxing matches right in the grass with the world championship boxers that you could ever imagine and concerts and anything that you could imagine that has a pay-per-view event <laughs> leading up to the pay-per-view <laughs> event will be my yes. show. So the, the talent will come through, the weigh-ins will be here, 
because I have a lot of friends who are billionaires. I have a lot of friends Hashtag who have relatable. more money than they know what to do with. And you understand, if you have a billion dollars, how much money you're making a year if it's at 5%? What if you have 2 billion? What if you have 3 billion? You could never spend that money. Well, I have a friend who- Are you lecturing us as like a multimillionaire that other people are being not being generous with their money and they're using it for selfish reasons? Are you really doing that? It's $3 billion. And when I was in my house looking up at the sky saying I didn't have enough money to buy a cheeseburger, <laughs> he wouldn't help me. <laughs> this, okay. This is about as relatable as Kanye West being like, I'm in debt. Nobody's sad for you, Kanye. And nobody's sad for this guy. It is not because people don't care about the poor. It's because you're not poor. This is a real person who was like five minutes ago telling us that he's got, you know, which multi-million dollar house are you talking about? A tiny little 18,000 foot house that was 65 million bucks. Which one was that? Which did you go to? He's complaining about not having money to buy a cheeseburger. I'm sorry, it's not gonna work. You have to feel bad for this guy at a certain level because it's like, I don't know, man. I, I don't think this guy's happy with his life. And fundamentally, that's because money doesn't buy you happiness. And like, this video is just such a beautiful testament to there is no such thing as enough because as soon as he start finishes this this thing, apparently he's gonna, you know, try to invest money into a plane, right? Cause you know, his house wasn't enough. I guess he needs to put a plane on it. I. I'm going to buy this plane that I call the God plane. And yeah, and that's basically what you're dealing with. I mean, this guy is totally delusional. I think producer Michael might be one of the most sane ones, to be honest. I've watched a few of his videos since this video that we're watching here, and he comes across more as a collector, like an interested collector, like he just wants to show you the cool stuff he has, rather than somebody who's just doing it to flex on people. So I would have to say, producer Michael, even though he doesn't challenge him very much here, he definitely is a lot more normal and it seems more well adjusted than anyone else we're talking about. Although I will say the grass comment was very extra. This is going this. to be a first. I never <sighs> walk on grass. And yeah, at the end of the day, like what do these people have to show for it? Like the guy uh, complains multiple times in this interview about his ex-wife. I just don't think these things make people happy. And I think this show is like a great accidental documentary into this. I hope you enjoyed this different kind of video and um, thanks for watching. See you guys the next one. I know what you mean. This ain't what it seemed. Nothing but a trick trying to sell me on a dream. But that was where you lost me. Wake up and smell the coffee.